I'm Anil Kumar and in this video we'll try to understand the concept of counting when we are including combinations with identical elements. So the topic is all combinations with some identical elements. To begin with let's take an example. Here I have three types of elements. One is in the shape of a diamond two are in the shape of a square and we have three triangles. Some are identical as you can see these three are identical triangles and we also have two identical squares. Now the question here is how many combinations can you make with this set of elements? That is one diamond, two squares and three triangles. Now, to solve such questions, let's look into it one by one. What we have here is one diamond, okay. We have two squares, let me say two squares, and we have three triangles. Now, what is the choice which I have for diamonds? I may select it, I may not select it, right? So, I have two choices here. I may select it or I may not select it. For a square, what are my choices? I may not select it, one choice. I may select one of them, second, and I may select both of them, third. So when I have two squares, I have three choices, one more than two, since I can either select one of them, both of them, or none of them, correct? When I have three triangles, I will have four choices because I may not select any one of them. I may select one, I may select two, or I may select three. So we have four choices, one more than the identical elements. Now these are all distinct elements. So if I have to find out total number of choices, so all combinations, what do I get? The answer should be 2 times 3 times 4. Is that okay? Product of all the 3. And that gives you 2 times 3, 6 times 4, 24. Right? So, we have actually derived a very important relation with this particular example. This may look very simple. However, what we have learned here is something like this. If we have, let's say, P of one kind, right, let's say, and Q of the other kind, and R of the third kind, and so on, then the number of combinations is how many? Each will give you P plus 1, Q will give you Q plus 1, R will give you R plus 1, and multiplication of this will be our solution. So, so that is the number of combinations. Do you understand? That is the number of combinations when we select all or none. All or none. So in this selection, we have included not selecting any one of them as one of our combination, correct? Now let's talk about a special case. So special case will be when not selecting any is not valid, is not a valid choice, right? For example, if I have to select a committee member, I have to select, right? So there, I have no choice. In that case, the formula will be modified to P plus 1 times Q plus 1 times R plus 1 minus 1, right? So this negative is for not selecting any. I hope this concept is clear so far. Correct? So you may have this kind of a situation. For example, uh, let's take one. So if I have 
a situation where I have, let's say, one, two, three, four green balls, and I have one, two, three, uh, let's say, three red balls, and I have eight blue balls. And if I make a selection, how many selections can I make? So now let's talk about another example here. And I have to select at least one. So I say selecting at least one combinations with selecting at least one okay at least one so that means not selecting any one of them is not a choice do you see that in that case the answer will be these are four so we'll have four plus one that is five times three plus one is four times one two three four five six seven eight nine do you see that so that becomes your answer with minus one minus one is not selecting any one of them right so we'll have to do this first and then take away one so nine i mean we should do five times four is 20 and 20 times nine two times nine is 18 take away one we are left with 179 so here the answer should be 179 do you get my idea because not selecting is not a choice right now here is a test question for you which is very interesting the question here is <clears throat> how many divisors how many divisors are for let me take a number let's say 360 so you have to find how many divisors are there for the number 360 now this is a very interesting question it is kind of difficult to answer i like you to pause the video think about it the link is you need to find let me give you a hint here you have to do prime factorization prime factor to get answer okay that should give you a good hint and help you get the right answer so let me begin doing prime factorization of 360 so 360 so I'll go horizontally since I have limited space here <coughs> so 360 could be let us say 36 times 10 okay so 36 could be okay let's write 9 times 4 is 36 and 2 times 5 is 10 correct 9 could be written as let's go like this 3 and 3 is 9 and as far as 4 is concerned 2 times 2 is 4 so we can write 360 <coughs> 360 as equal to how many 2's are there 1 2 3 so 2 2 and 2 I should write 2 cube and how many 3's 3 3, three okay and how many fives just one five so what we see here is 360 has one two three four five six prime factors so it could be divided by any combination of these looking into our principle we can find the answer how many twos are there there are three twos so that gives us four combination right three plus one do you see that how many threes are there there are two threes so that gives us two plus one there's only one five that gives us one plus one combination now not selecting makes it zero can you divide by zero no you cannot so minus one for not selecting have I missed something if I select them all, it means 360, so I've included 360. How about 1? 1 is also a divisor. Remember, 1 is also a divisor. Is it okay? Which we did not include here. 
is it okay so we have to include one so i'm adding one here the idea is including one and not including one not including one means the other factors so that doesn't have any meaning so at times you may have to think so at times you may have to think correct that is important so that becomes the answer for the given case and these are the combinations do you understand so how many of these 3 plus 1 is 4 so we get 4 times 3 times 2 plus and minus 1 cancel out 4 times 3 is 12 12 times 2 is 24 so we have 24 divisors for the number 360 we have 24 divisors for the number 360 now this is a very difficult question which we have simply answered with the concept learned in this particular video so if you combine this video with the previous one where we talked about combinations with uh, all different elements and here we're talking about combinations with some identical elements it will make very interesting uh, to figure out how many combinations of money can you make with three similar coins and two different coins oh so we'll treat this as a different coin it is different right and these three are similar coins okay so these three are similar coins and these two are different coins now the question for you is what sum of money what different sums of money can you make with three quarters one nickel and one dollar i hope that should be easy for you all the best feel free to post questions and subscribe to my videos thanks for watching